Greetings, hacksters! We are here at Teardown 2019. Pre-recording this because we have some really exciting info to share and we wanted to get a video for you while we're both together. So who are you? My name's Alistair. I blog a lot for Hackster. Um, I work in machine learning and big data and sensors and IoT and a whole bunch of other things. Speaking of which, you've done some really cool benchmarking on this thing, but let's tell people what it is first. What have you got in your hands? It's the Raspberry Pi 4. Four. Four. That's bigger than three. It is. It's a bigger number. But what's better about it? I assume it's better. It's a lot better. So if we open the box, <gasps> it looks sort of like a Raspberry Pi three, but there are some differences. So first up, I don't see any HDMI port. What's the deal with that? So um, they've moved from a single. Not a big one anyway. No, they've moved from a single full size HDMI port to two mini HDMI ports. No way. So it's uh, entirely drivable with two dual head monitors at that point. So, uh, what's the max that you can drive with it? Uh, two 4K monitors at 30 frames per second, or a single 4K monitor at 60 frames per second. Nice. This USB connector also looks weird. So, ah, so there? that is the power connector. The power connector is USB-C now. <gasps> yeah. Um, so, this needs up to 3 amps. Mm. 3 amps is way more than you can push through a micro uh, USB connector. Um, you can't... The, the power supplies for a micro USB like really are very unreliable, about like two amps sort of around that board. Hmm. So um, this needs more power, so it has USB C. Aren't USB C chargers usually pretty expensive and kind of crappy? Yeah, so a standard USB C standard uh, charger comes in at around ten bucks, upwards of sixty bucks if you're actually like a nice one, a nice one. Um, the nice thing the foundation has done uh, along with this board is that they've actually rolled out their own official USB-C charger. Cool. And it costs eight bucks. <gasps> I'm falling over. Not literally, but in mentally I'm falling over. That's incredible. So yeah. what would you use all this power for? What have you been doing with it? Um, so I've actually been uh, doing machine learning on this. So we, I, I, as you said, I was doing some benchmarking stuff on facial recognition and object recognition. Whoa. And you've got a blog post about that. Well, right? Yeah, there are blog posts about this. Nice. Um, and one of the things I've, I, I did this, one of the reasons I had this early and have been playing with it for a couple of weeks now um, and not being able to tell anyone about it was really <laughs> getting to me. One of the reasons I had this early was so I could run some benchmarks because uh, the foundation were really interested to see how much faster this was running. And Ooh. the answer is this runs a lot faster. But on the specs it only says that it's gone from 1.4 gigahertz to 1.5. Right, so um, the core, the chip, the main processor here is actually a different architecture. Huh. The Raspberry Pi 3 was based around an ARM Cortex A53. Now that's a sort of a mid-range uh, processor designed for efficiency, not power. So this is actually based around an ARM Cortex A72, which huh. is a high-end processor. It's designed for speed, it's designed for power. Despite the fact that the stats look very similar, this runs a lot faster. You've got about twice as much Neon performance on this than the ARM uh, A53. Dang! So they've sort of swapped out the sort of lower power, more efficient thing for the more beefy thing that requires a little bit more. It's certainly one of the reasons why they've had to go to USB-C on this board. Oh. But you've still got a lot of the old assets as well, but some of them are kind of like made more sparkly and shiny. Like what about these USB ports? Oh, okay. So the USB port. So one big difference right now is can you tell the difference on this side, like the, the connector side? Is there an obvious difference here? Well, you're pointing at it and I read the article, so I'm going to guess. <laughs> Is it the Ethernet thing is on the other side? The Ethernet thing is on the other side. It's like it's it took me a bunch of time to figure that out, but they, oh. they've actually swapped the side the Ethernet connector is on. So your cases aren't going to fit anymore. No, you need an E case. Mm, okay. Yeah. So if you actually look here, the overhang on all the ports is slightly larger. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of reasons, including the the H mini HDMI and the USB C and the the swapping the ports that um, the old cases aren't going to fit. So you're definitely going to need a new case for this. Um, the other thing you can probably spot when I do this is the color of the USB ports, right? It's blue. It makes me very happy. It's blue. <laughs> um, so, of course, that means that two of these USB ports are USB 3. Nice. Which is a seriously big deal. Um, and we got there by replacing the, the LAN 7515 chip hmm. on the board uh, by this one, which is a PCI Express chip. Huh. Which uh, hangs off the new pro the new Broadcom processor on the on the board. Even the Ethernet like connector looks the same, but there's some extra jazzed up Ethernet stuff. Yeah, right. So like this chip here, um, it handles the uh, the USB, 
and this chip here handles the Ethernet. So they've unbundled the Ethernet from the, the USB. Hmm. So we get real USB, -C, uh, USB 3 on this, uh -huh. and we get real gigabit, gigabit Ethernet. Yeah. So the, the Raspberry Pi 3 obviously had gigabit, gigabit Ethernet, but little, little air quotes around it, because we only got about 300 Mbps out of it. Mm. Um, this has real unbundled one gigabit Ethernet. Um, it doesn't share a channel with the USB bus anymore. Wow. So you get much better USB performance, you get much better Ethernet performance. So there's another thing that isn't readily apparent, which is that you have some new uh, memory options. Yeah, so um, this is actually first foundation. They, uh, they're shipping this in three versions. Wow. So the Raspberry Pi three, uh, 4 comes in one gigabyte, which is the, the same as you always had with the Raspberry Pi. But because it's a new chip, you get a two gigabyte and four gigabyte options. So you can buy it in three different versions. So that's the, your standard $35 price point, and then you've got 45 for the two gigs, and then uh, 55 for four gigs, which is not bad. Yes. Yeah, so uh, so the question I'm asking you, and this is the same question that Eben and a couple other people at the foundation asked me, is hmm. what's going to sell best? I feel like in terms of value, the four would make the most sense. Like if people are buying this one, like there's still plenty of other pies around. If you're buying yeah. this one, you're probably going for the power and the speed and everything because uh, it, it takes more power and it does so much more beefy things. But then if you're buying a pie, why would you buy an older one? You just buy the one Well, if you want the one cheaper ones. Yeah. Oh, oh, fair enough. Yeah, um, I don't so, know. Maybe you have a bunch of old cases lying it's, around. It's <laughs> a, it, yeah, it's, it sounds like yeah, a huh. really obvious question, like which one will sell more? Hmm. And I think the answer is actually really interesting. Huh. Okay. I, think, I think it'll actually, it'll actually speak to, to how people use pies. Hmm. Like what people are using it for. Yeah, I mean, the power thing is definitely a consideration. I think that, like, for example, for Archimedes, for that, the robot, sure. right? He yeah. sucks down so much power. I thought the servos would be the thing that pulled down the most power, but yep. it's really the Pi. And that's a Pi Zero W. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, you know, if I were to swap that out with this, I feel like I would have to have a monster battery pack. So for, like, I'm not a lot of people are building wearables with... Yeah. But if you're wanting to build something like efficient, you'd probably go with a zero even. Oh yeah, another thing that isn't super readily apparent is that there's some new options with the GPIO pin. Yeah, um, so there are, uh, like the, the 40 pin GPIO is still there, it still looks exactly the same, it's still pin compatible, backwards compatible with all the other Raspberry Pis. Um, all the way back to one where there wasn't the 40 pin GPIO. Oh, so. yeah, what? Wait, that's backwards compatible with the one? Yeah, well, the first 26 pins have always been backwards compatible. Huh. So if you have a piece of hardware that's slotted onto the Raspberry Pi 1, you can slot it onto wow. any other Raspberry Pis. I wonder what people are still using from back then that's like a hat. Maybe Industrial one. stuff, maybe? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, backwards compatible, but it has other things. Some of the pins have mm. dual use. It has more UARTs, more SPI, uh, SPI more I2C, um, all in hardware all in the 40 pin connector. I can't remember off the top of my head how many there are, but I think it's lots. I think it's lots, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we haven't shown the back of the board yet. That's something that's pretty much the same. Um, on Ooh. the, well, it, uh, here's the back Maybe of the board. Maybe not. It's not, it's, a, it's actually on the Raspberry Pi 3, the, uh, there was a big chip oh. right in the middle of the board here. Mm -hmm. And if I vaguely remember, I think it was the memory. Hmm. Yeah, which is not there anymore. No. But the micro SD card is in the same place. The right? micro SD card is in the same place. And so is the display port, and uh, you've got your composite video out of the yep. stereo Compos audio. The stereo audio and composite video is still there. Mm -hmm. um, your CSI for cameras and your what's the display one called? They're both still there uh, in the same place. Uh, it has the the power over Ethernet header as well, mm -hmm. so you can use the the PoE shield uh, shield header hat mm -hmm. hat. PoE hat uh, that came with the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. I think it came out at the same time as that one. Hmm. And you still like the Model B Plus, or the 3 Model B Plus. You still have your Wi Fi and Bluetooth. You've got Bluetooth 5 now. Yes. Which allows you to. I like this up. I was like, what's the difference with Bluetooth 5? Turns out that you can stream to two, like audio to two devices at the same time. Not only that, you can stream two different audio streams to different devices at the same time. So if you want to do like a house media controller yeah. kind of thing, you could totally do that. I'm not entirely sure where the software support is on that yet. Good point, yeah. yeah. But um, in theory, it's possible. It's in the standard. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, wait, kits! Kits? Yeah. Desktop kit. There's a desktop kit. Cool, yeah. Get back okay. over here. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. So what's the deal with this kit? 
Okay, so um, one of the ways that the new Raspberry Pi is going to be sold as is a desktop kit. This is not a getting started kit. I, like, this was made very clear. Mm. Like, it's called a desktop kit. And I've used this, right? It's like I've plugged this into Moncha. I've got, but this is an entirely reasonable desktop replacement. Wow, cool. It's this, like, so maybe the first one that actually... Yeah, no, they, like, you, they got close with the Raspberry Pi 3, but this is, this is a desktop replacement. Nice. It, 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 you can have YouTube up running 4K video streams. You can type in, you're playing a video game, mm. and it, it doesn't lag. It, it really wow. it, it runs. Um, so for unless you're like a heavy duty developer that's like doing a lot of heavy compiling or something, this is a day to day laptop replacement. Yeah, because you run a bunch of benchmarks with heat and stuff. And yeah, um, so de like desktop kit. We were talking about desktop kit. Yeah. yeah. yeah so the desktop okay. like so one of the ways um, this comes is a desktop kit, which is it comes with the the four gigabyte, gigabyte version, the the official keyboard, the official mouse. Uh, the official USB-C power supply, um, an HDMI, a mini HDMI to HDMI cable to stick mm. it into a monitor, and uh, SD card with the operating system pre-blown on it. And that's Raspbian and Buster, right? Right. Yeah. This is one of the. This is the change that's def definitely not uh, visible. Uh, this runs will run Raspbian and Buster, which is a brand new version of Raspbian that will be released. Well, the say uh, with this. Yeah. Um, and this is, of course, uh, uh, off the top of Debian Buster, which is like, the thing that's just coming up to release now. So there the, might be some like little small growing pains. As there, there's going to be growing pains as it comes out. It's, mm. it, I don't think the Debian release is officially out yet for Buster, which is a bit unfortunate. So I don't think that's fully baked. Hmm. Um, so there, there's, there's some changes under the hood, like Ras uh, Python got replaced from Python 3.5 to 3.7, huh. which, which breaks a whole bunch of things if you're a Python person. Oh boy. Oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> but they've been moving in this direction of the desktop for a while because they've been, they came out with the keyboard and mouse like a, a few months or a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, so yeah, the, the yeah, so the, the keyboard and the mouse is really nice. It's uh, it works well with this. I've used it as a desktop replacement um, just for web browsing and stuff, like put it in the corner of my desk, hmm. and it works really well. That's incredible. Yeah. So yeah, what about the heat distribution? So the heat distribution, um, one of the things that, that um, one of the things we saw with the Raspberry Pi 3 was that people were a bit worried about the heat distribution on this. Um, personally, I've run, I run these things fairly flat out. I usually don't put them in cases. I normally cable tie them to things, <laughs> which um, means that they're all in the open air, so you get yeah. a bit more sort of airflow over them. Um, I generally don't have a problem. Um, a lot of people put, attach passive heat sinks to it, and that, that pretty much takes everything away. This is the first Raspberry Pi I've come across where I think you might want to put a heat sink on it if you put it into a case. Mm. If you're using it as a desktop replacement, it's absolutely fine. You can run it with video streams going. And you're gonna you're gonna pull it up about sixty Celsius, uh -huh. sixty five Celsius, um, which in the past would get it was right at the start of the the thermal throttling regime. Uh -huh. There's no incremental thermal throttling on this, unlike the previous versions. It just like hits eighty. It just hits eighty and then just slows way down. Where I have seen that is um, in the machine learning benchmarks I was running. Oh. Um, so I was doing some software benchmarks with TensorFlow. And uh, this got uh, something like 10 degrees hotter than the, the previous version. Mm. So I was seeing temperatures around 85, 86, 87 degrees Celsius, mm. and that thermally throttled the CPU. So you had to add some tense airflow? Yeah, so I. Uh, <laughs> I oh, that's that. awful! <laughs> Okay, well, you had to put a, put a fan on it? I had to put a fan on it. Oh. So, um, and that, for a Raspberry Pi, that's really easy because you've got the the GPIO pins, right? So you just attach a fan to the, the five volt and the, uh, or the, the ground and one of the pins and then you can throttle it from software just monitoring the, the temperature of the CPU. Cool. A small, a small fan, like really small fan, takes the CPU temperature all the way down to 45 Celsius and just keeps it stable. So it, it really doesn't need much. You can probably get away with passive heat sink for most of the purposes. Nice. So most of what I know about this, I just learned from reading Alistair's article. You should go check out the blog. There's both one just about the whole pie and the kit and stuff. There's another one about the benchmarking that you did. Yep. So we should follow you on Twitter. Sure. A-A-L-L-A-N. A. Allen. Ah, that's so good. It's so easy. Mine yeah. is so much harder. Okay, so I guess the, the, the stories are going to be linked down there. Yeah, and if you're in Cambridge or near Cambridge, you can go get one in yeah. person. So you, you can order it today 
from ATM UK British time, uh, which is what midnight on the, the west coast. Uh, eight or nine hours. Yeah, uh, something like that. But if you actually want one of these today, there is a whole bunch sitting in the Raspberry Pi store in Cambridge, England. Bribe your friends. Um, so if you work in London, um, there's a nice train from King's Cross. Nip up, get one. <laughs> Stand at a queue. I don't know. Um, if there's a queue, someone like tweet us. I really want to know if this forms a queue to get a Raspberry Pi. Thank you so much for giving us the rundown. <laughs>